My name is Carolyn Radish, and I am with Greenman Peterson, Inc. I'm also a resident of Hanover. And we are working with the town of Hanover and Dartmouth Hitchcock Medical Center on looking at ways to improve um, walking and biking on the Route 120 corridor. I've had a lot of informal conversations with people, and certainly there's a lot of room for improvement, which both the town and, and DHMC recognize. Um, and so, your IT person, which way yeah. do I move it forward? Just, just go like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah move like forward. Thank you, Michelle, for giving me a nod. I will give you a nod. Okay. And um, so, um, just an overview of the evening, just what we want to do here in the next hour. I know everyone's busy, I know it's beautiful, uh, but we wanted to just let people know that we're just beginning um, this process of a, basically a feasibility study to look at um, options to, to provide a bike and pedestrian connector uh, between Hanover and the bike path beginning or the, or the mixed use path on Medical Center Drive. So tonight uh, we just want to talk about what the study area is, what the objectives of the project is, what the schedule is, and public outreach. So we want to get everybody's input because you are the experts, you're out there a lot, or you would be out there but you're intimidated by the traffic and so we would love to hear um, your comments. We've brought big maps that you can uh, comment on and we'll have some other things going as well. So how can we make Route 120 more walkable or bikeable? And what would you like to see here? Um, in terms of the project team, I just wanted to do some introductions. So we're, uh, we're working with the steering committee, which includes Peter Kabaki, the public works director for the town of Hanover, and John Lee from Dartmouth Hitchcock Medical Center. And John oversees the sustainability and uh, Dartmouth Hitchcock also has a health outreach program for their employees. Um, we also are working with the Hanover Bike and Pedestrian Committee, and Bill Young is the chairman of the Hanover Bike Pet Committee. Barbara McElroy has been heading up the Route 120 subcommittee of the Hanover Bike Pet Committee, which is a very busy, great committee that meets the first Thursday of the month, if anybody wants to come right here in the Cal Library. A lot of good stuff going on with the Bike Ped Committee. have to give them a plug. Hugh Miller is also here from the Bike Ped Committee, who's been on the committee for a long time. Remembering when those paths went in on Medical Center Drive, right, Hugh? And am I forgetting any Bike Ped Committee members? No. We're also working, Rush Herschler from Upper Valley Trails Alliance is on the steering committee and Nate Miller from the Upper Valley Lake Sunny Peak Regional Planning Commission. Um, uh, myself, Bob White, and Joe Johnson, an engineer in our GPI office, are working together on the consultant team for the project. And Eric is here too. I'm just, I'm oh, Erica. Hi. I'm sorry. <laughs> Erica Waganik is also a resident of Lebanon Street and is on the Hanover Bike Head Committee and is an expert also in this area, a traffic consultant herself. Um, this is the study area that we're looking at here. As you know, you know it as well, we, are, we do, we have a road that, you know, goes from Hanover in town, so you're very close, really, to the Hanover Co-op, the high school on one end of this road, and then Dartmouth-Hitchcock Medical Center, largest employment center in the region at the end of the end of the road. And um, you can drive there, um, but it's a little, can you, you know, the conditions are not very friendly for pedestrians and bicyclists. Um, this is the view from Buck Road, looking down towards Greensboro Road. There are some, go ahead. There are some of you hardy souls that go out there on your bikes. <laughs> 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 so you free season, our hats are off to you. Um, and there's also people who um, walk and bike and would like to recreate there. So it's, it's a natural corridor for people um, to want to go between these major areas. Certainly with the construction also of Guile Housing, there's a lot of people who um, want to walk and you see them. Um, sometimes you see people, high school kids, walking to the high school and you just you cross your fingers that nobody's texting and driving. Mm -hmm. 
Um, so it's definitely precarious in some areas for walking and biking. In terms of the overall scoping, we're looking from in town Hanover, right here, Lebanon Street, to Medical Center Drive. There are some projects that are in the hopper, but we're looking sort of long term and, and bigger picture. So from Buck Road to Greensboro Road, a sidewalk is going to be constructed this summer, as well as a pedestrian crossing. So from Guile Hill, you will be able then to walk into town. And will that'll make a big difference for people. Yes. Will the pedestrian crossing be somehow lit or controlled or something? Yes. OK. Head, head. Yeah. OK. What, what does that mean? We, we've got lots of variations in this town. Which version? It's the, it's the head and the button. It's a button push and that gives it a walk signal. Stop, stop traffic. So it's connected to the stoplight. It's, it's connected, connected to the, stop connected the signal. Yep. It's a little tricky because it's a state road, state signal, so we have to work with what they can provide us with cabinet space and capacity. And the next slide. A sidewalk connecting from stores to the Tansy entry road is slated in the CIP for 2017, which is the capital improvement budget for the town. And But the budgets are approved every year at town meeting. So it's, it's in the program, but it still needs to be approved at town meeting next year. Yes? How are these? Sidewalks going to be separated from the highway. Um, well, that's or part of the question. Not going to be the they're in the right of way. They're, they have to be in the road right of way. And, and so they're going to occupy the shoulder. Um, part of the shoulder. Yes. Carolyn, that's an issue right away. Because I can so tell you. Make the bicycle path I do about 2,500 miles of commute in this in the same road. And one of the biggest risk areas is that curve right there, up there where it was highlighted in red. Yep. Because at least there's a wide shoulder there. Right. And as soon as you encroach on that with a sidewalk, an already constrained traffic way yep. um, for a cyclist becomes really hard. Yep. Yeah, that's a bottleneck. That, that's a real bottleneck. Oh, that's and it's even worse going back into town because it's a blind curve for cars coming around the curve near 83 Lebanon Street. If you look at the paint markings on the road right on that curve, right. you can see that on the inside. The cars the curve, go over them. The cars go over yeah, the paint right. And the three accidents that I've had in the last 15 years have been in that area for those reasons. Oh, okay. The plan but one is, was a glory and it's not The plan is not to build in the current paved area outside of the town that's the current plan. So by right of way, you mean some space that there is the, the right of way of varies from, from as you get to where the Tandy track is, that it's 175 feet wide at that, that point. It's 250 feet wide as you head into town. So there are some restrictions. There's, there'll be some retaining walls necessary to do that. But the, the goal is to not affect the travel way, particularly the bike ways. As much as possible. That's 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 what I mean. We have to live with what we have, but um, the plan is not to narrow the pavement, but to use some of the green space on the western side of the road. Of the road. Okay. That's mm -hmm. that's really sure. But there's, there's some a curve. There's some yeah. There'd be on a curve. Yeah, there's curve. some tricks with that, and there's some some issues. There's telephone poles, and there's trees, there's bankings, there's there's some, there's some issues. There. Right. But that's all part of engineering that will happen. It has not happened. So the detailed engineering on that has not. But those are those are in the hopper. Okay. Yes. Oh, um, it's great that we're going to have the sidewalk for 2017. But what I think there is a problem in how do you cross to the other side of the street? Because you, the goal is to go to the co-op. Right. You have to cross the street, and currently the cars are coming down the hill at an unknown speed. I'd love to see a traffic study of the speed of the cars coming down the hill just before that crosswalk. Probably about 45. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> you know, very there much There is actually a, a, a device in front of public works right now on a pole that's measuring speed, volumes, the cars are turning so we can get a sense of what's happening there. And right. texting. 
It's scary. We don't. We know we're not looking at texting. We're looking at. No, I'm asking you to look at texting. Well, that's something we, we don't have any ability to do. We have to have. The, 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 the town is in the room, right? I can only do what I can do. Um, texting is an issue, an enforcement issue. It's a police matter. It's not a public works matter. But that would be a sort. That'd be a very good survey. How would you do that? But how would you do yeah, it? You sit somebody down there in a chair and you look. And you write it down. We actually asked could they count kids in the car going to race school when the folks who are doing the count said that that yanks up the difficulty of doing a traffic count tremendously. I, I think the idea is a great one. It's just not too plausible right at the moment. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Pete, you said that uh, you've got a, a device at public works. Public works that's measuring speed. Yes. Um, I'm guessing that you're aware that speed is different approaching Greensboro from Hanover than it is up by the public works building. Yeah, and this thing does look down the road. Slow down. Yeah, it slips down, looks both directions, so it looks down the road 500 feet, so it's not quite to the intersection, but fairly close. The idea of that, that device is really so we can look at this section of sidewalk. Um, we have an obligation of, of Guile Hill to build it this summer. I have a meeting with the DO2, not this, not actually the following week, to discuss how this could be constructed. It's outside the urban compact. It's in the state right, right away. State road, they control it. Their idea is, oh, just stick on the side of the road and let the cars keep going at 60 miles an hour here. Not really what we want to do, but we still have to live with what they can tell us we can do. So we're trying to convince them of other things by using data. Um, we'll look at the other section at a different point, but this is really to look at the stretch here. So the bike pad master plan looked um, townwide at improvements to uh, walking and bicycling. And the idea for this area here was to drop one of the southbound lanes. It is not needed for capacity for cars right now. And use that for um, a path for bicyclists and pedestrians connecting to DHMC. So we want to connect, you know, the center of our town with our biggest employment center and, you know, the medical school with Dartmouth-Hitchcock and provide a place for the people in these neighborhoods where they can have an attractive place to walk and bicycle. So we've got the Greensboro Road neighborhood as well as the sort of co-op neighborhood um, area. And, you know, we have the rec center, we have the co-op, we have the senior housing. I spoke with somebody in the, that lives in the senior housing whose husband lives at Wheel Lock Terrace who doesn't own a car and likes to walk and would love to do this walk, but it's impossible to do this walk. And so, you know, there's, there's a lot in town and there's a lot in the Buck Road and DHMC area that people want to walk between. So again, this was, this was general, you know, town-wide, and so now, this study that we're doing now is the feasibility. This is when we get into more detail and start to think about what could that um, bike and pedestrian connector be. Um, the next slide. Karen, can you get, are you going to, that's a great picture at the top on the right. Uh, I'm, I'm guessing that that's kind of looking from the, from the south to the north and a concept of a bike head path plus a green esplanade. Uh, so this is the before yeah. picture on the bottom, and that's the after picture. So that's just helping visualize what that could And you're standing right in front of Buck Road taking that picture, right? Starting right, looking down, yeah. Route 120 towards the south. Did you say you're going to take one of the driving lanes? Yes, one of the driving lanes. And so that, so that's what we wish to do. However, we need to get permission from New Hampshire DOT because that's their jurisdiction on that part of the road. So Hanover has what's called the Urban Compact on the other side of Greensboro Road through town. And so Hanover has much more say in terms of what can go on in terms of that road section. Um, and Hanover maintains it. Um, this section is under DOT's control, including the signal, by the way, is DOT's control. It's from Greensboro um, South. And so in order to do that, we would need to have permission from New Hampshire DOT. Um, and so, you know, that's to be continued, but we're having that discussion, and that will shape how we look at alternatives for this roadway. 
how that discussion goes with DOT. Do you know how wide the multi is planned for at this point? So this is what, you know, this is what this study is going to look at. You know, it, it depends on how much right of way is there. Um, there's a lot of right, it's, it's constrained over Mink Brook. So between Greensboro and Buck, there's guardrails, there's a steep bank. You're, it's a much more constrained section. When you're um, above or south of Buck Road, it's, it's really much wider and you know, there's a lot of options. So, um, you know, it would have to be a minimum of 10 feet to have bikes and pedestrians comfortably. In both directions. So, is or a two-way path. So one of the things to consider, you know, about that idea is that everything is on the west side of the road. So Dartmouth-Hitchcock is on the west side of the road. Kyle is on the west side of the road. All that stuff at Buck Road is on the west side of the road. And, you know, we did have input at the bike ped master planning time. And people on Buck Road and Guile said, there's no way I can cross the street and use the bike lane going the other direction. So the idea of being two ways on the west side made sense um, for this particular segment of road. Yes. So I want to say that again, that was, you know, it's a concept. So I, I don't have details. That's what we're going on to now. Yes. Um, I, I know this is a concern, it sounds like, for this gentleman and a lot of other people who are actually bicycling on the road and sometimes bike paths get built and they take away from the road and it makes it unsafe for bicyclists who are not sort of lulling along to actually be able to bike commute. For instance, the safe route through the school. school. Right. Yes, that is a perfect example of this concept. Right. It's, it's less safe now than it was before. Right. So, I, yes. I have to speak up. Ben, John, depends on for which person you mean. Right. On, on, uh, I've been watching the mixed-use path, and we had 163 children go up the mixed-use path to, to school this year. And we have a lot of kids most mornings going up it. We had zero kids going up it previously. We have a few kids on the road. So it depends on which audience you're talking about. And the, and the like robots, as Carolyn calls them, uh, <laughs> that you guys who are uh, fearless of bike riders on the... So I'm going to get into that. Okay, all right. Well, anyway, it's, I understand and we'll try very hard to accommodate everybody, but sometimes you guys just have to slow down a little bit and to let the kids and others have a chance. That's my soapbox. That's all. I agree with you about no. slowing down. No, no question. Yeah. But the problem is that when you come on the other side, there is really no shoulder left anymore. Right on that stretch. Um, which, which, what do you, let's I'm not get into the mixed use path, or we'll kind of go down another path. <laughs> we'll come back yeah. no, no, I, I totally understand. I'm talking about the trade offs, right? Yeah. So the trade offs are not easy because for some, a bicyclist coming the other direction, what used to be a shoulder is no longer there. I think we can all probably recognize that this corridor versus the in town corridors are going to be used more by people who are really interested to get from point A to point B, mm -hmm. as in where they live to Dartmouth Hitchcock. And so it's going to be much more, the orientation of it is much more to a traveling route. So. Well, but there are neighborhoods here. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I, don't, I, don't, I think that's true that there are a lot of people right now commuting to the um, Our family is represented in that group, but we also recreate, you know, yep. use this area for recreation. And right. I've been surprised to see how many more people are out on the weekend going for long distance rides, but also just kind of day trip. I don't know. I think that what Dick said is true. There will be trade-offs. I mean, in the ideal situation, you could have the path and also a bike lane. I don't know that we have that much right away. So that's what we need to, to look at. But we understand that there are different users. Um, but we, our objective in this corridor, so this is, a, again, this is a major town connector. Uh, we want to accommodate the widest possible range of users. Um, and so I understand, you know, that it's uncomfortable for bicyclists who like those big wide shoulders to, to have less space or to ride on the path. Um, so it's, you know, that's all part of what we'll look at in terms of the alternatives. But, you know, I guess one question I have for the bicyclists is, you know, this is going uphill. Is it still, you know? Is it still going up from up Greensburg? Well, but there's a big, there's, there's a, there's will be a shoulder on the other side. But Pete just said it's two-way multi. 
It's, but it's, but you have options in that scenario. If it's if you want to go down on the west side, you can. If you're coming out of the hospital and you just want to go tearing down as fast as you can, you just go across the signal and go down. All right. So just so that this question is asked and answered, is any of this going to potentially impact the northbound cycling lane? We don't know yet. So let me let me just finish my presentation and let's hold questions till the end. So, so the objectives are to accommodate a wide range of users, also bicyclists, pedestrians, transit users. So there's two transit users, two transit stops on that uh, road there. I'm sure that you felt sorry when you see people waiting for the bus on that location. They're pedestrians also. They need to cross to get to the other side of the road in order to, to get the bus going in the other direction. Certainly the pedestrian crossing at Greensboro will help that. Um, and so we're looking at all of those users, um, uh, pedestrians, we have ADA accessibility issues, all of these things are needing to be considered in the, in the design alternatives that we um, move up to. So the next slide. When we, so this is what we're talking about in terms of, you know, the different users. Um, that we're out here, and also what the level of stress is for bicyclists. Um, this is uh, research that has been done on bicycling in America, and the interesting thing is for people who may have gone to Europe or, or seen photos of bicycling in Europe, you see a much broader cross-section of the population bicycling in um, some of those countries, and there's a lot of different reasons for that. But one of the reasons is because it's less stressful. So in the United States, for example, men tend to outnumber women as bicyclists um, because uh, women fall into the category of interested but concerned about safety. So you have about 1% of bicyclists are very experienced and very confident. And you know, every lane is a bike lane. I can you know, I'll take the lane. I'm very comfortable doing that. It's about 1% of people. About 7% are, but probably most of you, the bicyclists that we see out there fall into this 7% of the population. They're confident riders, happy with the bike lane, um, and they can go wherever they want. Then you have about 60% of the population who's interested in bicycling, but is afraid um, of bicycling in traffic and they want more protection from traffic in order to bicycle. And then you have about 30% of the population, 30, 32, just not interested in bicycling. So, so there's, that's the tension that we're feeling in terms of, you know, what is the design and, and what are the different needs of the different users. But, you know, to really accommodate the widest range of the bicyclists, to encourage more people to bicycle, we have to provide more protection for people and to make it feel safer. So some of those, um, the next slide. So the confident riders, which uh, are the people that we see out there today, um, about 8%. And the next slide. The interested but concerned group, so this is on the Lime Road path. So you see a lot more kids, parents with kids, um, but you also see um, you also see people going fairly fast because it's not the density is not really uh, precluding people from riding on the path. And I have another photo of that. So you know the objective is to get the broad, the broadest possible audience on these major connectors. This is looking at how people measure stress uh, for bicycling. And it has to do with the number of lanes and also um, the speed of the traffic. And this is not assuming any, any separation for the bicyclists, but the, the, the bicyclists are mixed into the traffic. So you can see that on Route 120 at 35 miles an hour, that's the highest level of stress. So level of traffic stress four. Um, Level of traffic stress three is sort of the confident riders are okay with that. Level of traffic stress two is, is more for people who are intolerant of being in traffic. And you have that on slower speed roads and residential roads, lower volume roads. Um, 
a lot of you know a lot of the in-town residential streets in Hanover would fall into that category. So that would be comfortable for children as well as adults that don't want to be in traffic. Point out that your 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 thing says speed limit as opposed to actual speed. That's correct. <laughs> Makes it worse. Yeah. So it's and that's a big issue on this section particularly um, on Route 120. So again, here's a bike commuter on the mixed-use path on Lime Road. Um, and so I wanted to emphasize that we are just at the beginning and our schedule, we're just collecting data. We wanted to get this first initial meeting in before um, school was out and before people leave for the summer. Um, so we're, we're really just starting. We're going to be collecting data. We're going to be developing alternatives over the summer that we will have for you again in September. Um, we would like to get your email so that we can keep you informed and also um, send out a survey. Um, but we're just beginning, and so we're just wanting to get input and ideas from you, like what you have said already. But we want to go down on paper. So we're just some options to think about, and you know we want to know what you like and what you don't like. Um, so one option is a mixed-use path. Another option is a sidewalk with a buffered bike lane. Another option may be an off-road path. What's that last one you were looking at? You called it a mixed-use path. So there's a sidewalk. Why do you call it a sidewalk if it's not like elevated, like a? What so there's a sidewalk. There's a sidewalk next to it. So the sidewalk, the sidewalk is. See the sidewalk. There's a sidewalk. Oh, I see. Yeah. Sidewalk for pedestrians. The sidewalk for pedestrians. So I don't want to forget about pedestrians because it's about pedestrians too. We've been talking a lot about bikes, but um, so on a mixed-use path, it's both bikes and pets. But here you could separate the bikes and pets in this way. And you know another option is you know going away from the road. There is some possibility of that. There's a, an old right-of-way, but there's a lot more topography involved. Um, and so those are some of the options that we can consider. We'd like to have your input on that. And looking at the overall schedule, so we're just beginning now in June. Um, over the summer, we're collecting data, doing analysis, looking at speeds, uh, volumes, crashes, um, getting input from you. We're going to meet up at DHMC tomorrow. Um, we'll be sending out a survey and, um, and then we'll develop alternatives and we'll come out again with a series of public meetings like this in September with alternatives. And we'll be looking to get input from everybody on those alternatives. Then we'll develop a preferred alternative, refine it, cost estimates, feasibility, and finish by Thanksgiving. So that's the overall schedule. Um, the next slide. And we would like to keep in touch with you. I'm interested to know how you found out about the meeting. If I could just see, um, did you hear from the Tanover website? No. The Hanover list. Listserv. Listserv. Okay. Listserv. Is that how most people found out? Okay, there was also a transaction ad in the paper. Do people see that? Anybody um, see the calendar ads in the Valley News? Calendar. We're trying to figure out what's the most effective way. I saw the little sign with very, very small print in, uh, I think, your yard. Uh, Erica's <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. <laughs> That's good. Way to go, Erica. Uh, College. The college email yes. blast. Yes. Okay. It was also it was also on the Upper Valley Trails Alliance email that they send out once a week or so. Okay. Good. Um, so it was on there. Okay. And then we also have a, the bike ped committee has a Facebook page. They published the wrong dates, by the way, for this meeting. I'll take responsibility. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to let you know it said the 14th and 15th. Oh. It's okay. Mm -hmm. Sorry about that. But it did say Wednesday, Thursday. <laughs> I think. Which even so makes it worse. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so it sounds like the list service by far the most way to get people. And then if you leave your email, then we'll add you to an email list. And um, we'll keep in touch that way. So that's just my brief introductory remarks. Any more comments or questions? 
What we would like to do is just informally invite you to look at the maps, to give us a, you know, comments. Yeah. We've got the map blown up so you can show us the problem spots. Um, we also have by the door before you go out, you know, ideas that you like. If you could take the dots that are on the sign-in table and just put a dot, just vote. It's dot voting, like at the ballpark. Um, just, you know, what are the ideas that you like best? Um, and we're also taking concerns. Yes? I have a quick question to John. Yes. Is DHMC now committed in the winter to actually plow that sidewalk, which hasn't been plowed before? Yes, we've committed to uh, maintaining the the bike path along Medical Center Drive only on one side, sure. the uh, westernmost uh, pathway. So the Guile Hill side. So, so to the right going towards the agency. Correct. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, excellent. Because <laughs> I, you know, the winter I'm walking that whole route, I've fallen off the snowbank that was there one, one day walking. Yeah, and I'll, I'll add if anybody would like to talk about more DHMC specific questions, comments, inter, you know, learn about why uh, we're so interested in making this happen. If we can, if we can help make it happen, uh, then come talk to me directly. There's also comment cards on the sign-in table for you to, to write us your ideas or concerns, anything that you want us to be aware of. I really encourage you to do that as well. Um, yes. Carolyn, quick question. Yes. Not clear about the scope in terms of from what what uh, area we're talking what about. What area? Right from town all the way to you can see uh, is open for discussion, or is it just the 120 it's, segment? That it's we're... picking up from the sidewalk that ends at stores, I guess. Is that correct? Uh, yeah. is that the, yeah. So we're we're meshing in somehow with Hanover's existing system. That's a very constrained area in terms of width. Um, and we're continuing up to the beginning of the bike path on Medical Center Drive at the pond. So we're looking, that's the scope. It's a little, it's like a mile and a tenth, a little over a mile. So it's a fair distance. Yeah. So you mean, oh, sorry. Sorry, if I have pet thieves about loop road, I should the loop go road. bother. <laughs> <laughs> I'm afraid so. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. So, yeah. so that's in Lebanon. Good. Just want to say that. Okay, over the line in Lebanon. So people who are commuting further oh, to Santerra, Lebanon yeah. is your group. Okay. You mentioned an off-road possibility. Can you say something about that? The one that goes like completely off the road. There is, you know, there is a, you know, a option. Um, there's a, the old. That can probably right be best away. addressed showing it. It's on probably this on map. the map. It's mm -hmm. if you if you. Get Aaron, it's up there if you want it. Okay, so well, we can't see it all, but so you know where Buck Road is. Mm -hmm. So there's a there is a right of way that goes partway. There's a bridge that would work for bikes yeah. and pets, and then but then you have to get up to Route 120, and um, so that's one. That, that right of way is there. Are you talking about like the road to the Tansy? Nope, no, it's no, so this would be at it's the end parallel of there. Buck Road. It's, it's kind of parallel, but, but it, it kind of down. dumps you off in two places that don't really continue off road. Well, there's a sewer easement, it's a steep bank. Yeah, you know, I mean, that's it's where an option. the 120 was before they built 120. 120 was, no was there. there. So that's on that's to the north, and then From to the to south. The there is um, one of the, we were reminded, and I had heard this and we were reminded again, that when Guile was developed, that there was a condition of approval that um, stated that uh, a bike ped connections somehow through there, through that triangle. Um, like, are you talking about going through the main brook area? No, 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 from Buck to Road. Now I'm saying medical Buck to Medical, medical Center. center. Oh. On, on so the it's still parallel to Route Okay. So that there is the possible of an as yet to be determined potential alignment through that area. We can show you on this big map after so we're done if you want easier. to look at that in detail. Okay. You know, that's rougher, it's more construction. I mean, the one thing about if we can use the existing right-of-way is that it's a lot cheaper and it probably would be built a lot faster. 
Yes. The other question I had is you said that there's some kind of agreement that gives Hanover more control of Greensboro Road North. Um, is that a given? Route 120. That, yeah, on Route 120 from Greensboro Road heading north into Hanover. But from Greensboro Road south on 120, we're constrained because of this agreement. Is that a given, or is there something it's, it's that actually state 30 law. Is a, in angry, statu in a statute yeah, can we change that? It's called the Urban Compact. Um, okay. It's statutory. Um, the, you see the crosswalk shown in this picture? That's roughly <coughs> the beginning of the urban compact, something north of that the town controls, maintains, mm -hmm. can do it as long as we can move traffic, we can do virtually anything. Safe. Mm -hmm. okay. uh, south of that, the state controls what happens. Sure. But they it's control everything. to extend the, the compact? Um, well, we've had some discussions about that. The, the board is not that excited yeah. about taking over more road. <laughs> uh, there's a bridge crossing here. Um, if you, anybody came to town meeting this year, they know it is a very difficult discussion about budgets, and this would be more money to, to maintain. So if you all come out and vote for the budget, then sure. <laughs> but that's the issue. So if, give us more money, we'll take care of everything. <laughs> within the urban compact, so DOT won't maintain it. The town is taking the We'd be responsible for any bike or if it's off road or if it was a separated path, the town would have to maintain it, sidewalk or a, a mixed use path. Yes. Yeah. So just just to clarify some of the comments that I've made, I don't want you to think that I'm opposed to this idea. I I voice some objections uh, some concerns. But I think this is a great idea. Uh, I do have some concerns. One of them, of course, is, uh, is maintaining cycling and safety through that corridor. Right. Some of the things that I heard were that a sidewalk could cause this, the current bicycling lane to become more narrow. That's pretty concerning in that section. So that is, we need to, the detailed engineering has it. Right here. This is on the, on the Eastern sides are very wide shoulder. Yeah. The lanes coming down the hill are very wide, which is why traffic is so fast. Yeah, we don't need that. So right. one of the one of the options would be to narrow the travel lanes right. and give them give them less space to travel fast. They will slow down. I mean, it happens in town. You give them more road, you get more pavement. People go faster. So there is there's well, a balance. You use there's that balance. You use that theory on the safe route route to school and ended up creating a two foot wide bicycle. Well, that wasn't a bicycle, that was a shoulder. That wasn't a bicycle lane, that's what it's different. Mm -hmm. It would be a minimum five foot bike lane if you're going to put a bike lane. That's not a bike lane, that's a shoulder. Well, what is it on the north? On the east side, it's five feet. But is that a bicycle lane? On the, the five foot lane on the show, on the right, on the, on, line right. on the east side is a bike lane. That's yes. right. not five feet. It's five feet on the, on the it's north side. not five feet the entire lane. Right? And maybe some spots it's not. <laughs> there were some spots that wasn't before we did anything. So that's, that had changed. Okay. Well, anyway, the, another concern that comes to mind right away for me is the multi-use path. Now, I talked with Bill, Bill about my concerns about the multi-use path in, uh, at the other end of town, at the safe route uh, section. But I still owe Bill a letter. And I've got to uh, clarify some of the topics. But um, to compare the two, the current multi-use path that exists on the safe route from school uh, is about nine feet wide. I think it was supposed to be constructed as ten feet. Uh, that's not so bad because there's plenty of room to escape in an emergency. If somebody does something risky, front of me on the bike, then I can always go for the grass. But here, it looks like you're going to have guardrails and fences uh, closing in the multi-use path, so there's no escape. That's, yeah, in part of it, I would say, yeah. And I think the issue is, on the flats, it's very different. If you're going uphill, you don't have a problem with speed, but if you're coming downhill, Right. It's a big, I mean, to, 
take that picture up there and envision somebody coming down the hill at 20 miles an hour and then meeting up with that crowd of people. Bill, I biked to the hospital for 20 years uh, from Hanover. No, I don't anymore because I don't. And, and I agree with you, but I have something on my bicycle called a brake. Uh, and if I feel like there are people out there and it's dangerous for me to be going like fast, I use a darn brake. And I ring my bell when I'm coming up behind somebody so they know. And I, 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 we get a whole lot of complaints on the bike bed committee about bad behavior of bicyclists. You guys like to do your thing, and I love it, and I do some of that myself. But there's a lot of bad behavior, and I just think you need to kind of, there are places where you just have to slow down. I mean, and this, this may be one of them, and the mixed use path may be one of them. I don't know about that. Yeah, I mean, you don't want to slow down. No, no, no. We Blame the millennials. It's, uh, we've, we've, had people, no. we've had people come to our committee and say, it has slowed my car down going down Lime Road to the, going to commute because I have to go slower. We want you to slow down because people were speeding yeah. through there too. And we did, and so it's so it's a, the, 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 we didn't put up the data about your probability of surviving a crash on speed. I have four friends who were three, two girls, two little girls, a mother, and a grandmother who were taken out in a town two weeks ago by a pedestrian, by a by a people, somebody in a car. They were in the crosswalk pushing a stroller. They all ended up in the ambulance and off to the hospital because somebody went through the intersection in a little town like Hanover. And, and, and they all survived, but they, they were in a town in a zone where they were going under 25 miles an hour. And as experts say, you're a lot better off. So I, I just think that's true with cyclists, that's true with cars, and then unfortunately we're going to slow some people down. If you really want to fly, there are places around here where you can get your speed up and, uh, on your bikes. But some places in, in town you're just going to have We do want people to go slower because people live here. These are houses and people need to cross the street. People are to actually Erica had a comment. Um, I had a comment and then a question. The comment is it's my turn to talk. Okay. Um, the uh, I am very sensitive to the idea that there are a lot of people here. The people who are commuting now are the brave people who are comfortable driving or riding their bikes on 120 during the work week. Um, I would argue that given the speeds and the volume on that road, that you would be safer on a mixed use path or some sort of separated infrastructure. I don't, best practice right now for a road this fast would not be to put a bicycle next to traffic. On the weekend when there's not that much traffic and there's a lot of space, I think it's fine and it's a great place to do long training rides. But personally, I think it's, I mean, not personally, professionally, like my expert opinion here, um, and the data, the science shows that it's it's just not safe to ride next to cars going this fast. It's safer for everyone if you have protection, whether that's a buffered bike lane, whether that's a mixed use path that's separated by something. Um, you know, my husband rides to the hospital every day, and every day I think, is he going to come home or is he going to, am I going to get a phone call? And that's not a great way to live. The question I have is, um, a lot of our neighbors couldn't be here today because of the school calendar, um, and but did want to share their input. I wasn't sure what the preferred method for them sharing input if they couldn't be here tonight or tomorrow. Um, they can, um, if we could get, do you have an email list? So we can contact them. They can, um, they can email Peter or John. Um, so there's a there's a sheet on the sign-in table that has like a synopsis of contact info and schedule and just a little description of the project. Uh, but if we could get emails, then we could contact both ways. Okay. Yes. Uh, yeah. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Um, listen, I'm a pedestrian here, not a cyclist. But I do want to say um, I have found that, like the markings on the mixed important so people know this is the bike, this is the bike lane. Because um, especially when you're talking about mixed use with people from the senior center. Um, yeah. Repeat the question, Carolyn. She says to... that the markings on the mixed use path is important. And so you mean the signage? I mean, um, or on any mixed use path? I mean, like on the ground. This is your lane, this is your lane. Because it seems like some of the, the EPF um, 
not everyone is a snow mobile, not everyone hears a bicycle. If you have people who are socializing and talking, they're not picking up the signals that a bicycle is behind them. Yes, um, I hate to open one more can of worms, yes. but um, this is my favorite pothole on Route 120. <laughs> um, I bruised my tailbone and couldn't ride for four days after going through this one. And what it is, is it's a sewage grate that takes up the width of the bike lane. Um, and so is there a consideration in this redevelopment for making the bike lane safer, both by making them wider, separating them from traffic, but getting rid of obvious yeah. roadway obstacles as we're redeploying? I just want everyone to know. I'd like to second that because yes. uh, where is that? So it is if I we were in this right. So this is <laughs> perfect. Yeah. Right about right, right there. there. Yeah, right, right there. Spot. Just after the intersection. And there's a second <laughs> there's a second one there too. Yes. Which forces you to come near the road. Right, the traffic. Yeah. 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 So this is another piece of, of safety that I haven't heard anyone say anything about. Um, that also can cause quite immediate. This is a, this is a chronic problem with DOT yeah, storm saying. drains. Yeah. Is they aren't concerned about it, even though it's in a bike lane. Um, yeah. You don't have the same issue in, in town when we have bike lanes because we make sure that they're flush. Yeah. We make sure that we, we can move them off and move them off. We would be responsible for if it was a off-road path. We'd be responsible for it. So it would, we would take care of that. Okay. It's not an issue. But, but yeah, we we. We're the ones that put the cones on it when they came in because the state doesn't take care of it. We warn, we tell the state all the time, you better catch crazy cable right here. There was a sawhorse on one, that was our sawhorse because they couldn't even put a, a, a cone on it, so it's a problem. So, yeah, there's, there's, a, there's an issue with their maintenance. That's, just that's add, thank you for the heads up. I was going to say thank you for telling us we'll fix it, but it's not in our purview. <laughs> I know, to fix it. I know. It's yeah, just Peter Bucky, and, and under Hugh Mellert's tenure on the leading the bicycle committee, and he started putting in every new storm drape that went into the town of Hanover became bicycle safe storm drapes. You don't notice it, but if you're running in the in, in any race around town or you're riding your bicycle, if you see one that's not not uh, uh, oh, yeah. friendly, let us know. That road will be repaired sometime and we'll replace probably replace it. Uh, good, good. But that was his doing and he was doing to kind of start getting in bicycle friendly storm drapes. People didn't always think yeah. about that, but they do now. Who does the storm drains across the river? Peter knows. Who does the drainage across the side of the river? On the, oh, bridge. On the bridge. No. The bridge, um, the, the state bridge, so we maintain the bridge. Um, that's the way they built it. Um, we can't modify them. They're on the bridge. If they're off the bridge, we'll take care of them. Those are. Those are. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, you don't want to fall in one of those. Those are the scuppers. Yes. As a resident of the area in question, the pedestrian crosswalk that is further down, I think it's below Stores Road, but it's above the co-op, um, is an extremely dangerous pedestrian crosswalk. It should either not be there or it should have some kind of signage that motorists actually pay attention to because about two out of 10 motorists pay attention to that on my rough survey. And, and then you have rear-enders from the people behind the motorists who did pay attention. Um, so that's a, that's, Crosswalk is a great concern. I don't know if that's already on the radar. It is. Um, I've let, I mean, one of the issues is um, the simplest solution is we move it. Right. But it doesn't. Because then the pedestrians the don't have the expectation. But I mean, that's, that is, you're safe for crossing the road without a crosswalk, right. a dangerous spot that went with a crosswalk. Um, the only way to make that safe is to narrow the road so you don't have two lanes going north because you have that, that blind lane where people think somebody's. Stopped in a different lane, and there's a pedestrian mm -hmm. right there. Is there any consideration of actually doing a light there ever? Like, um, like the light that's on. We've, 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 had, we've been experimenting the with these, and um, we find that in certain circumstances like this, they're not that effective. Yeah. They people don't pay attention to them. How about a Norwich 25 mile? Your your speed limit. Cops in there. No, just the, the, the <laughs> sign that says how fast you're going as you're screaming down the hill. We 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 will put some in time. You know, we we'll, the problem is we don't have as many, but we will do something. But that's that's not going to solve the problem ultimately, which is a blind two two lanes when there really should be one with a crosswalk. Okay. No, no, that's not line really line the issue. Right it's the speed. No, it's it's. it's I it's cross it every speed. twice a day. It's not just speed. It's it's blind. There's too many too many lanes for the crossing. Uh, have we considered moving a crosswalk up the hill where it's more of one lane in each direction? 
that, and that's another possibility too. But you lose line of sight because of the sand hill curve and the hill dropping. The reason why it's, it's, the reason why it is where it is now is because of the bus stop. That's the only reason. Oh, well, that explains why it's there. Otherwise, it wouldn't be there. Because I never would. <laughs> so. I've tried to take it away, and I get yelled at every time I go. Okay. Oh, well, so, oh, sorry. Well, so we live on the other curve, um, way on the hill of Sand Hill. And coming into town often at night, the rush hour traffic is cutting off not only, like, they make, they make the single lane, two lanes much earlier because the lane is wide. And as a... I don't often bike that time of night, but I would think as bicyclists you would want that narrowed because they take up the entire bike lane so that they can split it into two earlier. Yeah. 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 Uh, it was fantastic when all the markings went in, all the way from Lebanon Street. It was actually okay then people recognized mm -hmm. that cyclists share the road, right, right? in Cheers. front of the school. The problem is markings fade, right? Yes. And this time of the year is classic, right? right? So I noticed just empirically that, you know, for example, in that turn off on Greensboro Road going north, right? And then up the hill uh, near 83 Lebanon Street where there's a curve, right? Yep. The markings are faded, and what's happening is that drivers' habits are they, they yes. creep into because they turn they're turning to the right, right? Right. So they try to cut the corner and make it faster. And they're going too fast. <laughs> exactly. So they're going too fast and coming right on them. There's been so many close shaves there. Mm -hmm. So I think you know again it's a budget thing here, right? If markings could be maintained, that'd be fantastic. They can't, they can't be maintained in good shape. I know. Um, I know. That's, yeah, the only that's thing you can do is put down some sort of um, scoring on the pavement. And this, yeah, this is a question, oh. can you do that one and still make the bike playing safe? Yeah. We've had that debate on and off for years. Right. Um, just a suggestion, and I, I understand that I'm describing something that belongs to DOT and not to the kind of panel room. But as a cyclist, I go through that intersection more than most of the intersections in the Upper Valley. And I go both ways, or actually all three directions, uh, in and out of Greensboro Road, going, uh, coming or going from Hanover or Lebanon. And something that, as cyclists, we could really benefit from is um, something that would signal the light when a single bicycle wants to turn left on the Greensboro or turn left yeah. off of Greensboro. Yeah, so, so the bike pipe is well aware of that. We just had the annual Ride of Silence in April. Yeah. If anyone doesn't know what the Ride of Silence is, it's, it's remembrance uh, of those who have been injured or killed in bicycle car accidents. And we actually brought the Ride of Silence group out of Greensboro Road and turned left on the Route 120. And in order to do that, with that size of a group, we had to have a police escort to go through that intersection. Yeah. Um, but if we could get... Yeah. When I came to this meeting, there was a bicyclist trying to turn up to Greensboro. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> I'm well, looking at the lights to see if it was going. Counting Look backwards for the 60. There's no, so yeah, so there's no. It's the, it's the one place in the Upper Valley where I run a red light. Yeah. The same no, place. That's maybe the only way I can turn it. You have no choice. You have no choice. There are other places in left the, at the top of the hill on Santerra. Yeah, turns That turns never down. turns no. for a cyclist, yeah. but that's a Lebanon problem. Yeah. <laughs> so the DOT problem. Oh, DOT, sorry. It's DOT also. So one of the things with the DOT might be to try to keep them to strike the road more as if they're bicycle lanes rather than just regular roadside shoulders because there's more stuff happens to strike out a bike lane. So if you ride from the bridge into Norwich, you know, the striping in there with the very, you know, with the right turn lane that peels off, that's a, that's a striping regime that's specifically set up for bicycle use as, form, you know, as formally designated bike lanes. And it's a different kind of striping than like in Greensboro Road, the way the stripes of the shoulder sweep into Greensboro. If that was really striped as a bicycle lane, what would be, what would be, 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 be
Well, you, you know, like through an intersection, sometimes you do the ticker, you know, sort of the dots. Sure. But sometimes, you know, now they're saying that actually on the painting Norwich. out. On the Norwich side. Well, yeah, we're using, Nor yeah, we're using Norwich as an example, but Greensboro is a great place to look at the difference yeah. between striking it as bicycle lanes, two ways, or however, you know, whatever choices we develop, and the way you see it right now, which is basically a white line that kind of gives you a place on the pavement, but it doesn't give you a whole lot more than just that separation where hopefully a car would go into, but I think we've already heard that that doesn't happen. Well, from, from the point of view of the Bicycle Pedestrian Committee, I really want to thank everybody who's come here tonight uh, to make two points. One is, is that this public input is extremely helpful. The people at the front of the room are going to be meeting with the powers that be at New Hampshire Department of Transportation. What you're talking about for the last five minutes is New Hampshire Department of Transportation. It's not the town of Hanover. We cannot control yep. the Greensboro right. We cannot control this section of road. But having you, John, say that that's a problem and others in the room say that this corner is a problem, I assume Carolyn and Peter will, when you sit down with the folks in, in Concord and sort of say, listen, our community came together. They think this section of road has room for improvement. Here are some ideas that we have. They, they thought our ideas were reasonable. Please go ahead. It's very, very helpful. So, so thank you for being here and your ammunition, your, your comments definitely will, will make our case a little stronger as we present it. And, and hopefully we'll have options. If, if the New Hampshire Department of Transportation doesn't give us much flexibility, my reason, my sense is that we don't have nearly as many options. We're, we're limited to the right of way and have to build under certain constraints. Any other comments? Anybody want to say anything? One. Yes. So I'm part of the Sandfield neighborhood, and next year when you vote for the board, the budget, there's 17 children where there's no sidewalk, and the bus stop is really Are you scary. Born in the neighborhood. Sand. It's Sandhill. Oh, Sandhill. Okay. I have the big fence. Bernie Sanders sign on. So. Um, <laughs> So We're just outgoing. please come support us. There's 17 kids, ages 14 down to zero, and we we really need your help because you don't like to bike there. We don't like to walk there. So. Um, so I would encourage people to uh, put your thoughts down on one of the comment cards. Make sure we have your email. Um, take a dot from the table and. Tell us, just put it on the poster, what ideas you like. Um, just give us your input in whatever way you can. <laughs> and we'll stay in touch. And thank you. Thank you.